Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Miranda Hughes. Thanks for stopping in if you're new here. If you've been a subscriber for a while, thanks for sticking it out with me. Um, I really appreciate you. Um, the song that God gave me today is Mirrors, and it's by Justin Timberlake. Alright, if you haven't yet, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is a very long song. Okay, guys, um, very long. So, hold on. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna be honest, I forgot to highlight this one. <clears throat> There's like three pages. <sighs> y'all gonna have to bear with me today because... <laughs> Holy Spirit, please lead and guide me through this because this is going to be interesting. In Jesus' name I pray, I give this to you. Amen. Okay, let's do this. All right, so this is, this one needs a drum roll. Okay, <laughs> here we are. Adam meets Eve moment. This is the moment y'all been waiting for. <laughs> You will know because God will somehow reveal this to you. This is for anyone who has a prodigal who ran away and they have not returned yet. Um, or maybe they have and they just haven't really progressed as far as being back in a marriage or relationship. But maybe you guys are on speaking terms. The point is your person either hasn't communicated with you yet and come back, or if they have, they haven't been progressing in the relationship, okay? But this is the moment y'all been waiting for because this is the Adam meets Eve moment. This is where your prodigal, your person, finally sees you 100% as their, you know, wife. Like, they see you as their wife. God has revealed it to them, um in some way um and again i'm just going to remind you guys especially if your person has come back or even if you're not in contact and you're just kind of like doubting how does your person know if you guys haven't been together god is doing work on your behalf so just keep in mind don't underestimate god like just ever just don't <laughs> That's hard to do, but I'm just saying, just keep in mind, this is a friendly reminder. God is working on your behalf for your person. There are things about you that you don't even know that God is revealing to your person. You don't know the connections that your person has. And your person may be finding out information about you as we, as I speak at this exact second. They could be watching your videos. They could be, you know, kind of stalking your social media profiles. Um, you just, you don't even know. Like, you really don't know. They could have someone, and this isn't to be a monitoring spirit. It's just God may be giving them the green light to be checking in on you. And he may be telling you to hold off on checking in on them. Because the whole point is God's all about mystery. God is all about you know, he leaves room for guessing, but he wants you to seek things out. Okay. Kings seek things out. Um, or Queens, they seek things out, which means if you're trying to get answers, the best place to start is starting with God in prayer and just asking God, Jeremiah ver chapter 33, verse three, um, the Lord will show you the hidden things that you do not know. Like, come to him and ask him, and he will reveal to you the, the hidden things that you do not know. So, sometimes God gives you revelation to things when you haven't even asked, because he's just a really great God like that. But, in this circumstance, just please know, even if your person, if God reveals to your person that you are their spouse, think about this journey that you've just been on. For however long you've been on it. For me, it's almost three years. Um, for me, that makes perfect sense that if my person were to know that I'm their spouse and they were in denial or doubts or whatever, I'm not going to judge him for that. You know why? 
Mm, I was kind of the same way at first. I mean, I knew when God told me who my person was, but guess what? There were plenty of times where I started to think, I was like, God, are you sure? I haven't seen anything. Nothing's changed. Nothing's happened. Or, you know, I thought it was moving forward and I thought my person was going to come back and then boom, I got blocked again. Or it was like, um, the door slammed and I had no more access to anything. And it went in the opposite direction, backwards. So just because you don't understand the process or you don't understand God's ways doesn't mean that God's not doing anything. And it doesn't mean that God's not working. It just means that, and also, just because God reveals you to your spouse doesn't mean that they're going to immediately, um, I mean, they should hopefully immediately understand the assignment and who you are and make sense. But at the same time, you know, God wants us to test the spirit. God wants us to seek things out and seek him. So another thing is to step out and find out. So even though, again, I'm giving this song to you today, um, and it is that Adam meets Eve moment. This is where, you know, your person is basically recognizing who you are because God is revealing to them who you are. In the, he did it in the spirit and now he's doing it in the natural. Now your person, like the, the veil has been removed. The scales have been removed. Your person can be like, oh, wow, you're my wife or wow, you're my husband. If it's, you know, a woman. Um, the point is, is that you got to allow your person to have some time to process this and to seek God in their own time through prayer or fasting or whatever to confirm if that's really true and that's only because God can reveal it to them but they're allowed to have doubts too they are allowed to go to God in prayer and fast and question too you know like don't rush your person's process and don't rush your your journey or your you know relationship or whatever just because you're impatient or you're tired of waiting or you're lonely or they came back and you're like, well, it needs to be like this, this, this now. Mm -mm. God's timeline, not ours. Um, it can move very quickly, but I'm just saying your person and think of it this way, guys. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know who your person is right now. So if they were to come back today and start talking to you, you're still relying on what God's telling you to you whether to say something or not or to um you know how much like revealing too much or not or and hold back or you know basically just um if your person asks you a question you know should you pray about it for, first or just answer the question um defining what is or isn't too fast for you guys um in the relationship or just like you know when it comes to standards and boundaries you are seeking god out you are questioning you are testing you are doing all this stuff your person's going to be learning to do the same thing okay so you're just not used to your person doing it to you <laughs> okay so be fair be reasonable um hold on guys Okay, sorry about that guys. My battery started to die and um, based off of location to charge it, I had to move around in the kitchen. And since I've been sitting for a while, I'm cranking out these videos. I needed to give my behind a rest um, from sitting and I don't mind standing a little bit. But um, anyways, the point is you're not used to your person um, going to be testing you and, you know, seeking confirmation from God first on certain things. So what I'm saying is you ask God during this journey, you didn't believe God at certain times throughout the journey and you had your doubts. Don't think for a second that your person may not either. They, they may not, but for the most part, they're human. They're just like you. They may have their worries, their doubts, their fears, their insecurities, and you're going to help them through that stuff. Um, this is where you guys can take moments to pray together or you guys can, um, if you can point them to certain sermons, um, online or take them to church with you or whatever, like just the more that you can feed them 
scriptures, the more that you can feed your person um, things about God, the more confirmation they're going to get. And some of the things that you tell them, they may not understand. So that's why, like, they're Christian babies. They're on milk. So it's like, you guys are on the meat. So just keep that in mind that this is where you may get frustrated with them when they come back because you're thinking, well, God told you that I'm your spouse or whatever. So why aren't you acting like it? And it's like, you can't go at it like that in that perspective. Because if you do, you're going to cause fights and blow ups because you're going to be rushing it too soon. You need to allow God to work and move in the way that he wants to do it and in his timing and allow things to fall into place naturally. We're building foundations. We, it starts with Jesus Christ as our foundation, you know, and then from there, it's just like the characteristics of God and just like everything that he's trained us for. Um, we're going to be building this from the ground up with our person, but you know, your person still needs to be trained. Your person still needs help. Your person is still a person and they're still going to make mistakes and not always understand everything. So even though God reveals to them who you are, it may take a little time for them to see just how much confirmation it is that you really are the one for them. Okay, so don't get too impatient or allow your emotions to get the best of you to the just keep taking those back to God whenever you get impatient or angry or frustrated or upset. Just keep going back to prayer and back to God because if you can do that, you can avoid a lot of arguments, you can avoid a lot of blow ups, you can avoid a lot of um, making yourself not look like you are the godly woman or godly man that you are, okay? Um, but anyways, sorry, I know that's kind of a longer introduction, but I had to specify that because, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of us <coughs> can easily forget that and myself included can forget that. And that's just something God that, sh that he showed me about it. So anyways, this is Mears by Justin Timberlake. Timberlink. Okay. Aren't you something to admire? Because your shine is something like a mirror. And I can't help but notice you reflect in this heart of mine. If you ever feel alone and the glare makes me hard to find, just know that I'm always parallel on the other side. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of how it feels right now is we know that they're meant for us and we're meant for them. And they're kind of like on the other side of that promise, the other side of the breakthrough, the other side of what it is that God's calling us to do. Um, so there's that. The next part is because with your hand in my hand and a pocket full of soul, I can tell you there's no place we wouldn't go. Just put your hand on the glass. I'll be there to pull you through. You just got to be strong. So your person is basically saying, um, and this is like you and your person is like, you just got to keep pushing through, keep having perseverance, keep enduring, keep going, don't give up. Like all the, the motivational positive things, like just got to be strong and just kind of, you got to let go and let God, that kind of thing. The next part is, cause I don't want to lose you now. I'm looking right at the other half of me, the vacancy that sat in my heart is a space that now you hold. So again, I was just talking about in the last video, then Christ came, how your person was so broken. Um, the place that really in their heart that needed to come first to be filled was Christ. Uh, next came, comes you. So um, that emptiness needed to be filled with Christ. But now that they have Christ, um, this is why God could take it a step further and show them even more about their life. Um, the next step, the next instructions, um, the next chapter of their life. Uh, basically, <coughs> when it says, because I don't want to lose you now, I'm looking right at the other half of me, the vacancy that sat in my heart. Like now they realize who you are. They're like, oh, like if they didn't, if they don't fully know yet, they will. Um, but this is basically them saying that you, God completes me, but you're the other half of me. Like you are the male or female version of me. And um, I don't want to lose you. Like I, now that I recognize this, I don't want that to be taken away or I don't want it to go away. Um, 
show me how to fight for now. This is the part where God highlighted to me where it came into my mind. I haven't heard this song since like I graduated in like 2011. And this song was just playing in my head one day when I was working in the garage. And I was just like, I was just like trying to think. It came to me like uh, the show me how to fight for now. Um, and I'll tell you, baby, it was easy coming back here to you. Once I figured it out, you were right here all along. So it took me a minute to figure out the lyrics because I hadn't heard it in so long. And then that's when it hit me. Like I had to Google it and find out. And uh, I just typed in the lyrics and then mirrors popped up. <coughs> Excuse me. And I started listening to it and I was like, oh my gosh, there it is. There's the song. So this came to me a whole lot. This was probably, probably in October, September or October when God gave me this song. And so like I said, God's been working on my prodigal and your prodigal this amount of time already. So um, whoever this is for... <coughs> excuse me God's working and moving but um <clears throat> the part where it says show me how to fight for now and I'll tell you baby it was easy coming back here to you once I figured it out you were right here all along basically they need your help on knowing how to fight in faith um and then also of course it'll be easier for them to come back to you once they realize who you are once they figured it out um that you were right here all along. Um, not about you being right, but just the fact that you were, they were meant to be with you this entire time. Like once they realize that they can't go into any other relationship, they can't make it work with um, people online or that they can't do OnlyFans, they can't live the old lifestyle that they did. Like it's just basically the only thing that, um, once they figured out that it was you that they needed to, to be in a relationship with, once it was, they realized it was you that they needed to come back to, it's a lot easier to know what direct where to go in what direction when they know where they need to go to. Does that make sense? Like, if you just hop in your car and you're going to go traveling, you don't know where to go if you don't have directions, right? So it's a lot easier for them to come back to you if they know for certain that it was you that God wanted them to be with. Um, hopefully that made sense. The next part is, it's like you're my mirror, my mirror staring back at me. I couldn't get any bigger with anyone else beside me. And now it's clear as this promise that we're making two reflections into one, because it's like you're my mirror, my mirror staring back at me, staring back at me. So yeah, it's like you're in my mirror, like you're reflecting them. That's where it's like the Adam and Eve moment because it's like Adam recognized Eve because maybe she looked like him, but she was made from his rib. She, you know, he said, I will call you woman because this is the flesh. At last, this is the flesh of my flesh and the bones of my bones. He recognized her because she was a part of him. So this is where your person, God is able to reveal to your person who you are because you basically like i said you're like the male or female version of your person they recognize you maybe even by your looks but more importantly your heart your attitude your perspectives your outlooks your um characteristics um the journey that you've been on in life like the things that you've accomplished and the things that you're interested in like it's a reflection of not just christ but a reflection of them like they, you guys have probably experienced similar things or gone through similar things um, or interested in similar things. And they're just like, oh, wow, I get it now. It's you. <laughs> and um, the part where it says um, in my mirror staring back at me, like you're staring them right in the face. Like you've been there this whole time. It's just like they just had, again, they had to be able to see who they were in Christ so that they could see their worth. So that they could see you because they need to be able to see that they are worthy of you. Um, the next part is, I couldn't get any bigger with anyone else beside me. And now it's clear as this promise that we're making two reflections into one. So it's like when they tried to, you know, open up a business or start something with someone else, a relationship or a business, they couldn't get any bigger. They couldn't grow. They couldn't flourish 
um, the way that they desired or wanted to because God wasn't going to allow it. That's not who he wanted them to be partnered with or linked up with. It was you, always you. Um, and so when they do come back in your life, they're going to recognize that when they're with you, everything around them is growing. Um, things are, you know, booming and blooming. <laughs> um, it, they didn't have that, that result when they were with anyone else. Um, but with you, it's very clear that, and the promise, you know, as we're talking about promises, it's clear as this promise. Um, so that's what I mean by confirmation. Like, you got to allow God to breathe into this and give it time, um, God's time for your person to recognize who you are, not just by God showing them through revelation, but also showing them in confirmation as they spend time with you, as they talk to you, as they do things for you or you do things for them. Um, that's how they're going to know. Because <coughs> it is. It's like you're their mirror staring back at them right in the face. Um Aren't you something in an original because it doesn't seem merely assembled and I can't help but stare because I see truth somewhere in your eyes. Oh, I can't ever change without you. You reflect me. I love that about you. And if I could, I would look at us all the time because with your hand in my hand and a pocket full of soul, I can tell you there's no place we couldn't go. Just put your hand on the past. I'm here trying to pull you through. You just got to be strong. Okay, so you're an original, you're not fake, you're authentic. Um, I can't help but stare. So they're going to be staring at you a lot in awe and amazement because they're just, one, shocked that they're even back in your life. Second, that they're getting another chance. Third, that God did all this. And fourth, that they somehow believed for it and received it. So you're going to be probably staring at them in shock and awe too. Like, wow, I actually... Uh, God got me there or you're going to be thinking like wow like um I prayed for that and here it is <laughs> um I can't ever change without you you reflect me I love that about you so they can't grow and change without you because you're the one that holds them accountable you're the one better than anyone else you're the one that um kind of gets to the nitty gritty and you're just like mm. Like, I love you, but you're better than that. And uh, you challenge them and you reflect them because, um, like I said, you guys are the, the opposite sex version of each other. Um, page one. Oh, goodness. Okay, sorry guys. I'm going to try to make this as fast as I can. We're almost done. Okay. Um... The next part is yesterday is history, tomorrow's a mystery. I can see you're looking back at me. Keep your eyes on me, baby. Keep your eyes on me. So they don't want you to be looking at anybody else, obviously. They don't want you to be, you know, when they make the mistakes, when they, um, when it says yesterday is history, they mean forget about the past, forget about the mess ups and all that. Like, obviously, you guys are going to make your amends, talk about it, catch up, all of that. But once that's done, like, don't hold grudges, don't hold back, and don't stay stuck in the past of what your person did or didn't do or what you did or didn't do. It's not about that. So, and then it says tomorrow's a mystery. So you guys are kind of going on an adventure. You don't know what the next day will bring. Um, your person says, I can see you looking back at me. Keep your eyes on me, baby. Keep your eyes on me. So not only do you want to keep your eyes on Christ, but you also want to keep your eyes on, you know, what your, your person is doing because, uh, not only do they need to be held accountable for stuff and reminded of things, but, um, they want you to build trust with them and they want you to admire them as much as they admire you. They want you to, um, notice them the way that you, the way that they notice you. And they want you to basically just, um, don't let the fears of insecurities or anything like that, you know, get in the way of your guys' relationship. Like, just keep your eyes on me. Like, um, we'll get through this together kind of thing. <coughs> um, okay, there's two more parts and then we're done. Um, the next part is, now you're the inspiration of this precious song. Okay, first of all, let me back up. There is... <laughs> 
a chorus, I guess, or a solo. I don't know what it is, but it, I will be honest and real. To me, it's the most annoying part of the song because they say it way too much. To me, it felt like it was unnecessary and just made the song way too long. Um, I love it, but it's just that part I don't like. And it's, um, I love the words. I just don't like the, the repetition of it too much. Like three to four times would have been nice. That, that would have been nice. And if you disagree, I'm sorry. You're allowed to have your opinion and it's okay if you like it. But um, the next part is you are, you are the love of my life. So whether they know it and can identify it yet isn't really the big case. Um, some might some may not again every person's prodigal is going to be different um it just depends on what god's revealing to them and how much and when okay please know that but deep down it's kind of like when you know you know when you know when you know that that's the one for you that's kind of what it's going to be like they know that you are the love of their life they just don't know to what extent yet um Obviously, they, ha they haven't come back. They haven't lived life with you yet. So they're going to be learning about this when they do come back. If they've already came back, they're just getting started and they're still learning too. So, But they will recognize this, okay, at some point. Um, there we go. Next part is, now you're the inspiration of this precious song. And I just want to see your face light up since you put me on. So now I say goodbye to the old me. It's already gone. And I can't wait, 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 wait to get you home just to let you know you are, you are, you are the love of my life. So basically your person, you inspire your person, okay? Um, they want to see your face light up um, whenever they are, you know, commenting on you or complimenting you or um, just talking to you. They just, they love seeing a smile on your face. Um, your person is now saying goodbye to the old life, their old self. It's already gone. Like they've already made up their mind. They've made the decision that they are choosing Christ. They're choosing you. They're, they're choosing the life that they can have with you versus anyone else. They want God and they want you. Um, and they just can't wait <laughs> at all, um, to get you home, um, if this is a marriage type deal, we all know what that means. It just means for them to have the honeymoon and do whatever people do on the honeymoon. Um, obviously, that's not entirely going to be the case when your person comes back. They might be thinking about it, but um, standards and boundaries, okay? God's timing. That's all I'm going to say on that. Um, and then the very last part, guys, thank you for toughing it out if you've waited this long is girl you're my reflection all i see is you my reflection is every in everything i do you're my reflection and all i see is you my reflection in everything i do anytime they see your social media posts your youtube videos um your business advertisements whatever it is that you're doing if they hear about you um they're proud of you and they love you and they're just like dang, you're my reflection, like, you're doing things that I want to do, or, you know, because you guys are interested in similar things, um, possibly even doing the exact same thing, um, <coughs> excuse me, so you impress them, you inspire them, they think you're incredible and amazing, and they may have not told you all this yet, but basically, they, they see themselves in you, and that's why you're their reflection, um, and it's not just in one thing, it's everything that you do and everything that they do um it says you're my reflection and all i see is you my reflection in everything i do and that's why i was i titled this one adam meets eve moment because this is not your doing you're not talking to your person trying to convince them that you're their spouse um, you're not having other people try to convince them. You're not manipulating or controlling it. You're letting God have his will and his way and work in your prodigal's life or your person's life, however, which way God chooses to do so. And that's the beauty of it because God's going to reveal to them in dreams, visions, um, some, if it is other people telling them it could be strangers, it could be angels, it could be 
um, just bringing up old memories and having a new perspective on it. I'm not going to go through all the list of ways, but just so you have a general idea, like God is bringing revelation and he's bringing remembrance and he's bringing in new light and perspective to your person, your prodigal and showing them this is the way walk in it. This is your person. This is your spouse. Um, and they will be able to receive it. Um, but like I said, they are still human. Um, it was very easy for Adam to receive Eve because there was no other women around for him to kind of be like, are you sure? Like <laughs> God only made one other woman or one woman. So <coughs> there was no competition. Oh, thank you. Holy spirit. Wow. So what God was saying in that moment is that when your person recognizes you as their spouse, when he's awakened to that revelation, it's like all these other women aren't going to matter because he's not going to pay attention to any of them in a, in a matter of sense, because it's like kind of like tunnel vision. Like he's like, God will give, give them your name or he'll give them revelation of you being the person. And it's like all of a sudden, like all these options, all these dating just, whoop, and they're like, I can't see anyone but you. Like you are it. It's not even about being chosen. It's you were destined for me. Um, you were created for me. And God does say the woman was created for man and not man created for woman. Woo, God. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for toughing out <laughs> with that one because that one was kind of long. Excuse my mess. I'm cleaning back here, rearranging things. I apologize. But, um, yeah. That was the Adam Meets Eve moment. And that was Mirrors by Justin Timberlake. Um... Thank you for you guys watching and, um, <coughs> excuse me, if you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notifica notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye guys and God bless.